Hello everybody. Greetings once again from Chennai in India. All housewives will be familiar with vinegar, which has many applications in household chores. In a YouTube video I saw recently, a lady has listed 50 different uses for vinegar in her daily routine in her home. I'm going to talk about the uses of vinegar in dermatology in an excellent article in the International Journal of Dermatology, uh, July 2022. Three authors from Wayne State University in USA have detailed its various dermatological applications. Acetic acid is a clear, colorless, organic acid with a pungent odor used as a solvent in rubber, plastic, pharmaceutical and photographic industries. Acetic acid is one of the simplest carboxylic acids containing only two carbon atoms. As we all know from our preclinical years, acetic acid is important in the metabolism of sugar and fat and it forms an integral part of the Krebs citric acid cycle. Vinegar, according to Webster's dictionary, is an impure dilute solution of acetic acid obtained by fermentation beyond the alcohol stage and used as preservative and condiment. A derivative of acetic acid often used by dermatologists is trichloroacetic acid, which in various concentrations is used in skin peels and in cauterizing warts, xanthelasma, palpebrera, etc. In vinegar, the acetic acid concentration varies between 4 to 8 percent. Vinegar is an ancient therapeutic weapon used by the father of medicine, Hippocrates. The beneficial antimicrobial effect of vinegar has been clearly demonstrated in many clinical situations, but the mechanism of action is not fully understood. It is bacteriostatic at a concentration of 0.1 percent and bactericidal between 2.5 and 10 percent. In this latter concentration, it has been shown to significantly reduce mycobacterium tuberculosis. In vitro studies showed that even in low concentration of 1 percent, it can halt the growth of several types of biofilms and at 3 percent concentration, it has been shown to inhibit the burn pathogens, the notorious triad of coliforms, Pseudomonas species and Staphylococcus aureus. So vinegar may prove useful in replacing the more expensive antibiotics in burn stressings in resource poor settings. Gauze soaked in 1% acetic acid was very effective in the treatment of diabetic leg ulcers and cost effective, particularly in eliminating Pseudomonas aeruginosa and also in having an antioxidant effect. It has also become a popular remedy for Pseudomonas green nails. It was shown that apple cider vinegar was effective as an antifungal agent against eight strains of candida involved in denture dermatitis or stomatitis. In vivo studies showed that this same apple cider vinegar was effective against tinea vesicular or pityriasis vesicular. The fungus showing faster clearance when compared to 2% ketoconazole shampoo. For an echomycosis, preliminary soaking of the affected nails for 10 minutes in acetic acid prevented biofilm formation. Thereby, it helped in the penetration of the antifungal agent and so it is used as an adjunct in the treatment of an echomycosis. It is well known that in suspected genital warts, painting the area with 3% acetic acid renders the lesions very, very white and thus enables the physician to accurately cauterize the genital warts. Uremic pruritus can be very disturbing symptom in patients with chronic renal failure, especially those on dialysis. A 5% white vinegar solution applied to the pruritic areas twice daily for two weeks considerably reduced the intensity of pruritus. 
After jellyfish stings, prompt removal of the tentacles followed by the application of undiluted vinegar can prevent the release of toxins which produce local pain, redness, edema and in some cases even renal failure and cardiac failure. Fortunately, it is not a very common fish found in Indian coast. A small clinical study showed that 2% apple cider vinegar applied to the abdominal skin of postpartum women significantly reduced the width and length of striae gravidarum. Since acetic acid acts on biofilms of uh, propioni bacterium acnes and it decreases inflammation by preventing cytokine release, it has been found useful in nodulocystic acne. Soaking hairs in 4% vinegar for 3 minutes facilitates the removal of pediculosis capitis nits, probably by removing the cement substance which attaches the nits to the head shaft. In mice, experiments uh, using chaff vinegar caused conversion of telogen to anagen hairs and this was comparable to 3% minoxidil. Thus, though it is used in diverse conditions by practitioners, it is a duty of dermatologists to warn them regarding the possible adverse effects. Vinegar being an acid can cause burns, especially in children, and particularly when the area is occluded by adhesive bandage. Vinegar causes release of nickel from stainless steel vessels and thus promotes contact dermatitis from nickel. So vinegar is the ancient remedy which can find application in a number of clinical conditions. As I told in my last talk on acupuncture, let us not brush aside older and safer remedies in our quest for more sophisticated therapeutic modalities. Reminding you once again of Alexander Pope's admonition, he said, be not the first by whom the new is tried, nor yet be the last to lay aside the old.